The harmonic series is one of the first series that most people learn about the diverges, but <laughs> what about the partial sums? Do these have a formula? Well, it turns out there's no closed form for them, so the best we can hope to do is find approximations, find upper and lower bounds. This turns out to be quite fruitful, and it leads to the discovery of the Euler Mascheroni constant. Let's check it out. Okay, so as we said, there's no closed form for the partial sums of a harmonic series, so our best effort is going to be in finding upper and lower bounds. Right, so, let's consider the graph of 1 over x, okay, which is quite similar to the harmonic series, so let's compare the two. We can represent the partial sums of the harmonic series by bars, and then just consider their areas, right? So what do I mean by that? So first of all, we go to one. Okay, then we're gonna go up to height one and just draw a bar across. Okay? And the area under this bar is gonna represent the one. Okay, and then let's just do the same thing. Okay, let's draw a bar across. And the area under this bar is gonna represent a half because the height is a half. Okay? because this is the graph of 1 over x, and its length is again 1. Right, so then again, we'll go up here, draw across, and this bar is going to represent 1 over n. Okay, and if we consider our areas, then the area of all these bars added together is going to be exactly the same as hn, our nth partial sum. And if we compare the area of the graph of 1 over x to the area of the bars, we see that the bars are an over approximation to the area. Okay, so let's write that down mathematically. We have h of n, and what do we say? Well, and now I have to take this pen lid off. That's greater than the area of under the blue curve, and that's represented by the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of 1 over x dx. Okay, and this is, of course, equal to the natural log of n plus 1, and then we're going to minus the natural log of 1, okay, but the natural log of 1 is 0, so we're just left with this. Okay, so we found a lower bound. Okay, the natural log of n plus 1 is less than the partial sum up to n. Okay, I'm just going to quickly rub all this off and draw the next graph, and we're going to try and find a upper bound, okay? So, I'll see you in one second. Okay, so for our upper bound, let's just try something similar. Let's try drawing bars, but now under the graph of 1 over x. And maybe this will be an under approximation, which is what we're after. So in the first case, I drew the bars that represented 1, half all the way up to the, the bar that represented 1 over n. Okay, remember we got that just from the areas, because this height is 1, this height is a half. But now... Let's just try and under approximate. So let's try and draw a bar where um, first of all we have a half and then a third and then we'll go all the way up to a bar that has height 1 over n. Okay? But I've almost shifted the bars. Okay? So now we have an under approximation. Okay, well what does what does this represent? What are these bars? So we have the the harmonic series except we don't have the first bar. We don't have 1. So this thing is equal to, well this is h of n, but then just minus 1, minus the first term. And what about the area under the blue curve? What does that represent? Okay, so now instead of going to n plus 1, we're only going up to n. Okay, so again it's an integral starting from 1, but going up to n. Okay, so this blue curve is, well, as we said, it's bigger. So we have this inequality sign. And it's an integral that starts from 1 and goes up to n, again, of 1 over x. And this is equal to the natural log of x. Okay? So the partial sum up to n minus 1 is less than the natural log of x. So the partial sum, just the partial sum, is less than the natural log of x plus 1. Awesome. So I guess it should be n, right? The natural log of n plus 1. So we have two bounds, okay, which is really, 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 really good. And then we can ask the question, what happens when n gets really, really large? Okay, how good of an approximation is this? Okay, well, before we do that, it's actually quite interesting to note that the harmonic series grows logarithmically, right, which is really, really, really slow. 
Okay, so if I reference my laptop, which is just here, we see that it says that the first million times, okay, so H, H, uh, million, okay, that's approximately 14.8. Before I carry on, I just want to say, I actually got some new equipment, I have a nice big tripod in front of me and um, a very, very bright softbox. Um, so let me know if you can actually tell the difference, I'd be really curious. Um, it was super fun to get some nice Amazon packages, that's always a pleasure. But anyway, so, we know that the partial sums of a harmonic series grew logarithmically, but now we can ask the question, well, what's the error term? Okay, so I'm going to let the error term on the, the, the nth harmonic series be delta n. Right, and then let's consider what is delta n equal. Does delta n have a limit or does it fluctuate? Who knows, okay? So, first of all, let's just minus the natural logarithm of n from both sides of our inequality. And then here we're going to get h of n minus the natural logarithm of n, which I'm just going to write as delta n. And then here we have the natural logarithm of n plus 1 minus the natural logarithm of n, which is just 1. Right, so now let's consider this left-hand side. Okay, so let's apply our rules of logs. And we can combine these. All right, but then I'm going to say that this is equal to, I'm just going to divide through by the n. Well, this is equal to the natural logarithm of, the natural logarithm of 1 plus 1 over n. And we have bounds for delta n. It's less than 1, and it's greater than the natural logarithm of 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, which is positive because the natural log of 1 is, is 0, right? So this is positive. Okay, so I'm just going to write 0 delta n. Okay, so now it's bounded. This is hopeful. Now if we can prove that it's decreasing, okay, or even increasing, okay, as long as it's monotonic, um, because we've bounded it, we can show that the limit as n goes to infinity actually does exist. Right? So now let's consider, well let's consider delta n plus 1. No, let's consider delta n minus delta n plus 1. Right? Use the definition, this is going to be h of n minus the natural logarithm of n minus, okay, minus h of n plus 1. And then that's going to turn into a plus, plus the natural logarithm of n plus 1. Okay, but now with the harmonic series, we have h of n plus 1, okay, which is exactly the same as h of n, except we have another term at the end, right? So these two things are going to cancel nicely. Okay, so we're left with just, here we have, well, we have, um, we have uh, 1 over, oh, I'll write this here. Okay, so we have the natural logarithm of n plus 1 minus the natural logarithm of n, okay, minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so we want to show that this is strictly positive or negative, but we don't want it to be dependent on n, right? So now, let's consider drawing the graph again, let's consider the integrals, right? Well, this is, this is similar to what we've seen before. This is the integral from n plus 1 to n of 1 over x. Okay? When we plug this in, we get the natural logarithm of n plus 1 minus the natural log of n. And then we're going to minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, well, let's draw a quick graph of that. So we have 1 over x. And then we're starting from n here and going to n plus 1. And then we're minusing 1 over n plus 1. But we know we can represent that as a, a nice rectangle. Okay, so if we go up to the natural log, oh sorry, if we go up to 1 over n plus 1, and then we just draw a bar across, okay? This area represents 1 over n plus 1. But this integral represents this area, okay? So we see that this integral minus this rectangle, well, it's still positive, okay? There's still a little bit left over. So this is greater than zero, therefore, we have that delta n okay, is greater than delta n plus 1, right? So it's, what is it? It is increasing? No, it's decreasing, right? 
and it's bounded. So the limit exists, and we can consider, well, what is this limit? What is the limit as n goes to infinity of delta n? Okay, so let's graph that. On the y-axis, we have delta n, our error term, and as n gets large, we're approaching what appears to be 0.55, but can we be more precise than this? So from the graph and some more accurate approximations, we see that the limit as n goes to infinity of delta n is approximately 0.5772, right? But what is this number? Okay, well, this number is defined to be the Euler mass Gironi constant, okay? And we represent that as just a, just a, a gamma, right? And this leads to the, the nice approximation that for large n, or h of n, that's going to be approximately the natural logarithm of n plus this constant, right, which is our error term. Okay, and this constant is, is a really bizarre one. It appears all over the place, however, not much is known about it. We don't know whether it's algebraic or transcendental. We don't even know whether it's irrational. So, that's it. End of the video. Nice approximation for the harmonic series, the partial sums. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, don't forget to subscribe to Matt Max.